However, why I do not know why Kanu believes sp spreading hate and violence will help his cause. The Arewa youth counter response was also very much unfortunate because the inference was that because Kanu is Igbo, all Igbo people must suffer the consequences of his action. But one must thank the governor of Bornu State and chair of the Northern Governors Forum, Alaji Kashim Shetima, as well as Governor Nasi Rufai of Cardinal State for their prompt interventions. Unfortunately, the message that was lost on the authorities in Abuja is that you cannot build an inclusive society when you react to national security threats in a manner that suggests some people are above the law. Although many people across the country also felt let down that some otherwise respected senior citizens from the Southeast who ought to have called Kanu to order were practically genuflecting before someone young enough to be their grandson. Meanwhile, what many of our young people, as well as the politicians in their 60s and 70s, who do not want to grow up, forget or are ignorant about, is that north or south, we need one another. That then explains why all the current agitations are a distraction from the real issue, which is that Nigeria is not working for majority of its citizens. And we see that evidence everywhere. For sure, the state of affairs in our country today is enough to make many people really angry. But if such anger is not properly channeled, it can be dangerous. For instance, I'm angry about how clumsy and inefficient public institutions have become in Nigeria. I am angry about the way public officials at all levels betray a lack of creativity, even in dealing with simple matters. I am angry when a teenager tells me that their school bribed invigilators to look away so that their teachers could tell them the answers while sitting for a crucial national examination. I am angry by the latest statistics from the UNICEF that in our country, about 90,000 children are expected to die of hunger over the next 12 months. I am angry about the foregoing and much more because I believe we can do better as a nation. But I cannot, because of such anger, lash at the next person or another group of Nigerians who do not speak the same language or worship the same God with me. Therefore, my charge this morning to our young men and women is, if you must be angry as Nigerians, direct it not to the tribe, the ethnicity, religion, race, gender, or even the sexual orientation of fellow Nigerians. Direct it at the greed and the perversion that make people deny others they are decent and fair opportunities. Directed at the ignorance and bigotry of a vast majority who submit themselves as ready tools for those who conspire to hold our nation down. And let us begin to figure out a way to defeat these people and our problems. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the challenge of the moment is to create an environment with less suspicion and more equitable distribution of power and resources among the critical stakeholders in our country. This country is full of promise and presents enormous opportunities. Even while it is true that the system is creaking beneath all of us and we must fix it, those who catch the narratives in ethnic or religious arguments miss the point and they are actually the problem. This is not a north-south debate, neither is it about dismemberment of our country. What we are saying is that the current situation where money is sent from Abuja to Badagri or Brinin Kebi is antithetical to good governance. Nothing can be more revealing of how wasteful our federal structure has become than a recent revelation by the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, and I quote him. I was in Sanfara State. This is the minister talking here. At the Federal Medical Center in Sanfara, there are about 120 doctors, but the state has 23 doctors at the last count to manage 24 hospitals. And yet, the federal government, federal hospital has about 120 doctors, end of quote. The pertinent question is, how did the federal government engage such a number of medical personnel who are practically idle and for just one medical center in one state?
The answer is simple. It is likely because of his heavy wallet. Yet you find this sort of waste replicated in several sectors. Therefore, we must find a way to make government more efficient and effective. How to make this happen is, the, is, the disagreement, is where the disagreement lies. But we are gradually coming to a consensus that it is the dysfunction at the center that is creating the current bad blood, frustration, anger, suspicion, and unhealthy competition among the various groups in the country. Anybody who has read the report of the Presidential Committee on the Restructuring and Rationalization of the Federal Government Parastatus Commission and Agencies cannot but understand the waste we call government in Nigeria. Chaired by former Head of Service Minister Steve Orosaye, the committee was established in August 2011 by the former president, Dr. Gulo Jonathan, with the report submitted to him in April 2012, although he ended up doing nothing with the recommendations. It is instructive that the committee identified 541 federal government agencies, 50 of which have no enabling laws. There are also 55 agencies that are not under the supervision of any ministry, and many of them, according to the Orosinia Committee, and I quote here, receive more budgetary allocations for personnel that they require because that component of their budget is usually inflated. It's in the report. These agencies include, now wait for this, <laughs> National Agency for Population Programs and Development, Population Activities Fund, Population Fund Activities Agency, and Population Research Fund. Yet yeah, those are federal agencies in Nigeria. <laughs> Pastor Koju, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I need to state here that bad governance is not peculiar to the federal government because the situation is actually worse in the states and as for local governments. Let us not even go there, given what governors have done to that tier of government in Nigeria. As things stand in Nigeria today, accountability diminishes as you move from the center to the other units, that is states and local governments. For instance, no president in Nigeria can get away with half of what governors do in their states, almost as of right, where there are neither checks nor balances. The speakers of the state's House of Assembly are more or less errand boys of the governors, and they serve and are removed at their pleasure. The logical result is that the promise of good governance embedded in this theory of decentralization that many now clamor for will still be delivered in the breach if there is no change in the behavior of the political actors. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm well aware that we do not have a perfect country. But regardless of how collective resources have been mismanaged over the years, there is great, great gain for us to be positive in the way we relate to the country we call our own. The pertinent question at this point is, what exactly do we mean by Nigeria? In our context, the answer may be quite complex. But one thing is certain, it should not be about geography or tongues or faith. For me, Nigeria is not the violent man who would demonize and threaten fellow citizens just because they speak a different language from his. Nigeria is not the angry man in a video who would ask his fellow men to go and poison the waters in the section of the country, oblivious to the Yoruba saying that when you throw a stone in the marketplace, you cannot determine who it will eat. Nigeria is not the Baba the boys who will issue a dangerous quit order on innocent citizens in their areas of domicile. Nigeria is not the public official who will steal the money meant for some, some of the most vulnerable of our citizens, knowing he has the back of those who should hold him to account. Nigeria is not the politician who spends his productive hours every day swinging hate and bigotry on social media just because he has a personal score to settle with the president. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, if I am standing like a motivational speaker this morning, I think you should blame my pastor, Evaristos, Evaristos Azodo, a retired colonel of the Nigerian army 
and a medical practitioner. Pastor Azodo is always leading us to pray for Nigeria and never to speak ill of her. It is strange because I know a little bit about his family background, which suggests he has every reason to be bitter about Nigeria, but he is not. From 6.30 a.m. yesterday, Pastor Azodo led us through a 90 minute free session for Nigeria and President Muhammad Buhari. Building a nation, especially from our kind of diversity, according to Pastor Azodo, is a process that may not necessarily produce quick results, but with a leadership that deploys fairness in the distribution of opportunities and citizens who see the value of shared aspirations in an atmosphere devoid of acrimony, it is not beyond us.